morning. <clears throat> Welcome to the shop in North Georgia. Today's project is going to be to start the restoration of this triple mid-century modern dresser. Uh, this piece is a little bit unusual because the uh, trim that you see on the uh, two outside doors look kind of like bat wings. That's actually uh, rosewood and the rest of the piece is in uh, walnut. The piece is from 1965. I believe it was designed to mimic the Broyhill Brasilia design, the famous Broyhill Brasilia design. Uh, this piece is it's in okay shape. We have uh, a top to refinish. Uh, there's some repairs that need to be done, some veneer repairs. And one of the drawers has uh, a pretty significant veneer issue that I'll show you here shortly. Let's take a look at the piece now and, and do a preliminary assessment of what we're dealing with. And first we'll look at the top. You can see the top needs to be completely refinished. There's the obligatory water stain. Uh, I don't think I've ever dealt with a piece of mid-century modern furniture that wasn't water stained. Uh, I'm from that era and I remember my mom, who was a homeowner in, during that era, always had uh, live plants in the house and I think that was very popular and they inevitably uh, took their toll on furniture. I have the mirror that goes with this, it's also walnut and rosewood, but you can see here from the corner we have a veneer chip that has to be repaired. We have just some you know, basic wear that we can clean up, some veneer damage to the drawers, nothing really spectacular. We have uh, a piece of missing veneer right here on the rosewood, and there's two ways of fixing that, obviously. You know, number one, we can just uh, use some putty and color, but, <coughs> excuse me, I actually ordered some rosewood veneer, and we're going to uh, do an inlay on this piece. It's going to be a really difficult uh, clamp because this is curved. When we open this drawer, this door, I'm sorry, we see we have a, a worn hinge here that's loose, and we'll repair that. And then these drawers took a beating, uh, particularly this one. I don't know if you can see it, but the veneer is, is actually gone here. So this is what we're going to be doing first thing today, is to inlay a new piece of walnut veneer here. We have some damage to the substrate as well fairly significant missing piece here so we're going to have to come up with a, some kind of a method of restoring the substrate before we put the veneer veneer on but we'll take care of it and there's another veneer piece there and there's some other finish issues but what I'll do now is uh, pull the drawers all out and um, we'll start working on the damaged drawer I'm going to do that first then we'll take a look at the case and start the stripping my plan right now is not to strip the drawers, to leave them the way they are. The side of the piece, the finish on the side, sides of the piece are in good shape. The legs need some color work, but I think right now we're going to do a, a strip and refinish at the top, do the veneer repairs, blend them in, and uh, see how that looks. And we, we may shoot the whole thing in a quarter lacquer, we may just do the uh, case in a quarter lacquer. But we'll decide that as we uh, as we go. So when we come back, we will start the veneer repairs to that. This is a little bit more damaged than I thought. When I first saw this piece, I thought all I had to do was re-veneer this. But we've got a pretty significant piece of wood that's missing. This drawer must have got slammed shut, caught on something, and just blew this piece right out. Uh, and a tip, whenever you have a piece of furniture that has a missing piece like that, take the time to look inside all the drawers and look inside the case because very often the prior owners will have saved that with the intention of fixing it sometime down the road and then forget about it. And more times than not, I've found missing pieces of wood hidden in these old pieces, and it's a whole lot easier to glue it back on than it is to fabricate a new piece. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be working on that, uh, on that piece of, uh, of wood, and I'll bring you back when we're ready to get started. Okay, here's how we're going to get this drawer apart. As I showed you in an earlier video, these clamps are reversible. I'm going to be using this as a spreader. I'll use the heat gun to heat up the glue in the dovetail joinery. 
and we'll spread this apart. Uh, dovetail joints only come apart one way, and uh, make sure you can see this. But in this case, it comes apart that way, so they have to be pushed out. And once we get this drawer front off, we'll be better able to assess the best way of restoring it. Again, this is a uh, this is not a quick flip. This is a piece of uh, substantial mid-century modern furniture, and we're going to uh, we're going to do a little bit, probably a little bit more thorough restoration on this than we would normally do on a piece that was uh, just a quick flip. So here we go. I apologize for the noise from the gun. When I edit this video, I will uh, try to do something with the volume. And as we've talked about before, whenever you're using the heat gun, make sure you keep it moving. You don't want to bubble the finish. I've got it set to about uh, 800 degrees or so. And it usually takes a minute or two to start to soften up the glue. Hey, we're making some progress getting this joint apart. I, uh, I heated it and then I tapped it with my nylon hammer here and we're starting to come apart, which is perfect. We haven't split anything yet. The drawer is still intact, so there we go. Hope you saw that, but using the spreader, we've got it. You can see in there, you can see the melted glue. So that's how you take a... Uh, a dovetail joint apart. Now what I've got to do is flip it around and work on the other side and just keep in mind that I don't have a strong joint to push against with the spreader any longer so I'm going to have to use the hammer more so than uh, I did here. But I'll bring you back when we've got that apart but that's how you take a joint, uh, dovetail joint apart. Okay we've got it pretty well worked loose and to get the drawer front out we're going to have to remove these staples here that held the bottom to the front of the drawer and that should be it. I think it's just these two staples here and I should be able to get the drawer front out.
Aha! There's the problem right there. There's a nail in there. And somebody apparently repaired this after this damage. They drove one nail in and left it. And there's a nail here. And they must have pulled back out. So that explains why that was so hard to get off. But anyways, you see these rounded portions of the dovetail, that indicates it was cut with a machine. It was cut by hand, you'd see the triangles here. Like it's a, actually a router bit that goes in like this, round at the bottom, and it cuts these dovetails. So it's out, I'll get this nail out of here, and then I'm gonna spend some time just contemplating the best way of repairing this. Uh, right now I'm thinking about running it in the table saw, right even with this one dovetail right through here, so I've got a nice square edge and then knowing up a piece that matches and maybe even hand cutting the dovetail to, uh, to match. And I'm going to have to wrap it what I put in to match this rabbit here and uh, then it's going to have to all be the new. So we've got a, a little bit of a project on our hands to repair this, but happily this came off without any damage. So it'll go back together. Alright, I'll turn you off and uh, when you come back we'll start uh, milling up the new piece and doing the repairs on, on this piece. Uh, thanks for watching. I know this portion of the video was a little longer than I'd hope, but that's just a bit of a challenge. All right, I'll bring you back when we're moving on to the next step. Now using a square, I marked how much I'm going to have to cut off of this piece on the table saw to get by the blown out wood. And you can see it's quite a bit. So we're going to run this through the table saw. That'll square off this edge. And again, when you use power tools, you'd be responsible for your own safety. I'm not uh, exactly Captain Safety myself, but I've been using this tool for a long time. Well, anyways, here we go. As you can see, this drawer front is solid poplar. You can tell by the green tinge of the wood. It's got a thin veneer glued to the back of it to make it look like it's not poplar. And then it's got the walnut veneer to the front. So what we'll do is we'll glue up a piece to make this the correct size and then once it's glued up and trimmed we'll be able to uh, mill it using the existing the existing marks that are on the piece and then uh, I will try my hand albeit a rusty hand at cutting the dovetails that are necessary to make this piece fit so uh, we're still going bring you back when it's time to uh, do something important Bye. well the question that begs to be answered at this point in the restoration is exactly how long do we cut this piece or how wide do we cut this piece that we're going to inlay in here and you know I'm not exactly sure how far this is supposed to go past this so I use a really high-tech method of um, identifying this critical measurement it's going to be a little bit confusing to follow but hang on and I'll share it with you this is the drawer from the other side since they're mirror images of each other all the answers lie right there and you can see there is a pretty substantial overhang off the bottom of this piece here so what we're going to do is just measure this measure that subtract that 
and whatever's left is going to be the width of the piece that we cut off to glue to here. And then we'll, we'll glue it, butt glue it, and then we will, once it's dry, we'll take it out of clamps and we'll start to mill it. So sometimes the uh, solutions are a whole lot easier than they could be. And uh, nothing wrong with copying somebody else's work on this business. Well, I took a run to Home Depot just down the road and picked myself up a piece of cut-off poplar, three-quarters of an inch thick, and uh, did some quick math. Not my strong suit, but the uh, drawer front on the uh, duplicate drawer is four and three-quarters inches, 4.75. We have 3.25 inches on the part that remains after we cut off the damaged part, which means we need an inch and a half strip and 11 and 5 eighths in width. So let's go to the table saw and start mowing that up. I want to show you how I'm marking for the cutouts of the dovetails. I've got the piece that we're going to use to fix the bottom of the drawer uh, clamped in place. It's flush at the corners here. So that's a critical dimension. Come around to the side. we we'll take a look at what we have here. We have a space here that will be filled with this. We have this dovetail here, so this has to be cut out, and it has to be cut out both in this direction and depth-wise the correct amount. So how did I figure that out? I'm looking for my calipers, but they're underneath the drawer. So what I did is I set my calipers for the depth of the dovetail and then I scribed, I'm sorry, the depth of the dovetail and then I scribed a line and this is going to, this line here defines the depth of my cut. Then I traced around the dovetail to identify the depth of the cut in this direction. And then I marked along here because this is going to have to be grooved out for the bottom and I did the same thing here on the other side so we have this dovetail joint here and this is a little bit ragged so what I've decided to do is I'll use a sharp chisel and hopefully you can see this and I'll cut right across that line and then this should fit in here now none of this stuff is going to fit exactly right as soon as we do it. We're going to be doing a little bit of shaving uh, with chisels and, and, you know, hey, this is not my forte, so I imagine I'll be using a little bit of, uh, of putty uh, if I get it too big. But um, this is what we're going to do to get this fixed. And looking at the, uh, the existing drawer that we don't have one of, you can see there is a groove in there for the bottom of course and there's the overhang that we're going to try to duplicate and then this is just milled out to give it a little bit of an overhang this is probably done on a router table I may do this on a table saw rather than pull the router table out but we'll see right now let's get it so it fits on there so the next thing we'll be doing is pulling this piece of wood off and I'll be getting out my sharp chisels I'm going to start to uh, work on where we've marked this and hopefully we'll be able to uh, cut this out and get it so this portion here is flush with the face because this portion, one more time here, this portion here flush with the face and actually I'd like to step it back just enough that uh, the veneer will line up perfectly 
and then this portion here up tight against here. And you know, we may have to do a little sanding, a little bit of milling to get it right, but uh, the first step is to try to get these uh, dovetails cut out and get this light in there so we can handle the rest of the critical measurements. There's the depth of our dovetail, transfer it to this engineer square, set the height of the blade, so we can cut the groove in our piece. part of it. It's got to go down a quarter of an inch, so we'll just keep moving it in. Here's our piece, you can't see it because it's too close, but it's all milled up. Let's see if she fits. Fingers crossed. Wow. I'm liking it. Nice and tight here. Here, I'll bring you in. Cut out for the one done tail. That's where we cut out for the other. We still have to cut this rabbit, which will help bring these flush. And then we will edge glue this on. We've got the perfect thickness. It's right to the bottom of the substrate. Then we'll take a razor knife. We'll cut off a nice straight line of this veneer. Lay our new veneer in there after it's all glued up nice and hard, and we are done. So that gives you an idea of what was involved in that. What was really not a very big uh, repair. Lots of uh, lots of little steps, lots of places you could make a mistake. But uh, just go about it nice and slow and nice and carefully. Think, and um, you'll get it done. So what I'm going to do next is um, is rabbit this out here. I get a little thought to how I want to do that, and then um, I guess we'll do it. So I'll bring you back when it's time for the glue. And I've got a straight edge clamp for the drawer. The way I know that it's parallel is I'm using this engineer square, this combination square, to measure it consistently. 
off the bottom of this drawer, which I know is square because it was a factory edge. So that'll give us a fairly straight or very straight line to cut this veneer off, and it'll make it a little bit easier when it comes time for us to re-veneer. And it's time to remove some of that uh, torn veneer. Now the idea here is for us to have this off in a nice straight line and it'll give us something to butt our new veneer against. Lots of times when you do veneer repairs you want to have a triangular shape or a, some shape other than a straight line. It tends to fool the eye a little bit better. But in this case we have such a long piece that if I put any angle in it at all I'm going to wind up taking a ton of veneer off this drawer, which I don't want to do. And the veneer that's on here is fairly straight green. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure if it's real or if it's laminate. Let's just assume it's real for now. So you run the knife through. You can feel it when it hits the substrate. It's starting to hit in a few places. Right there. Right there. We're just about ready. Start to chisel this off. What I do is I just take a chisel and go underneath it and lift it right off. It should let go right at the cut line and not tra travel underneath the roller. And if you have stubborn veneer, you can obviously uh, loosen it up with your uh, heat gun. But in most cases, you can scrape it off. Much of this project, this is being a little stubborn. I know everybody out there is cringing, waiting for me to stab myself with a chisel, but I'm trying to give you all a, a view and at the same time allow myself to see what I'm doing. Now this is wood. This is real wood. It's thin. It's, uh, it's walnut in here. There we go. See how nice that comes off when you get up underneath it. that's nice about this is that when I lay the, uh, the new veneer piece on, it will span the joint. The joint will be glued nice and tight, like so. It'll be exactly level when we clamp it up. And then that piece of veneer will lay right over that joint. And again, we're being extra, extra careful and doing the best, absolutely best job that we can do because of the kind of piece of furniture this is. But remember, this is an interior drawer, and it's not going to be seen uh, most of the time. The only time it's going to be seen is if somebody opens a drawer to get their underpants out. So uh, I mean, we'll do the best we can, but it's not like this is the, uh, the front face of the cabinet. 
So, so far, so good. I'm, I'm well pleased with what we've accomplished this morning. There we go. Nice straight line. sure how much of uh, that recorded because the camera acted up but here's here we are we've um, we've got the drawer glued up the fronts clamped down with those four four inch F clamps and then we're pulling across the dovetail joints with the clamp on top and we're pulling back with the two clamps on the bottom everything's lined up everything looks good I test fit the drawer before I glued it it fits in there so I'm well pleased with what we've accomplished this morning. We're going to let this glue dry, and uh, I'm not going to hurry it because we've only got one chance for that long join in the front to get
get strong. It's a parallel joint. It should be fine. But we're not going to shortcut the dry time. I think this probably will be like this tomorrow morning uh, to make sure I get the maximum strength out of that. And then once that comes up, we will sand it and we'll, we'll uh, lay the veneer on there and uh, start moving ahead with the rest of the restoration. So I'm glad you could join me this morning. This was uh, a little bit more work than perhaps I had imagined when I first picked this piece up, but there was really no other way to fix this than the way we did. The uh, substrate was missing. It had to be straightened out. It had to be replaced. We had to make sure that we inlaid it into the existing dovetails only because of the quality of the furniture. And when we get a little bit of stain on the, the sides of the new wood that we've put on, uh, no, you're never going to be able to notice it, so it'll look great. I'm real happy. Okay, so when uh, we come back tomorrow, we'll finish up this drawer, and probably the next thing we'll do is uh, strip the top and start on some of the veneer repairs on the drawers. Um, some of the smaller ones we may just use filler on, or we may uh, cut little pieces out and inlay pieces of walnut. We'll see uh, how things go. But for now, I appreciate you uh, watching. This is going to be part one because it was so long, and we'll continue with the restoration of this Kent Coffee Perspecta Triple Dresser and Mirror in uh, part two. Thanks for coming to our little shop in Georgia. Take care.